Hello, welcome to the vlog. It's Monday and I am just setting up for the week to make some plans in my Google Calendar. Still enjoying this, not using it as much because I don't know how to organise myself. I don't know what order I want to do things in and I've generally ignored it for the past couple of days just because I know what I want to do and yeah. Anyway, I am having a coffee and I also have a donut for breakfast because Matthew took Caden to go and get a pick and mix and while he was there he got some donuts so I thought I would treat myself to a donut because we've been eating really healthy on HelloFresh for the past couple of couple of weeks so yeah had a donut set up two days of my week and then left it at that but yeah I'm excited so this video is going to be basically about my sketchbook I am trying to finish one that I left off I started it in 2019 and it was my salad inktober sketchbook and I didn't finish it just because once I was done with October I decided to have a new sketchbook and yes yeah, so I'm going to finish that up and we're hopefully going to be starting a new one soon but I will be giving you a little tour of that sketchbook at the end of this video so stay tuned for that. Right now on screen as you can see I'm tidying up getting ready to use my desk to paint in and I've been painting a lot. It's actually Tuesday today, I lied to you. <laughs> it's Monday in the footage but it's Tuesday for me. But I wanted to show you just what I was up to yesterday and I'm just tidying up getting ready to use my desk for me painting in this sketchbook that you can see. And I had a lot of fun painting yesterday, I painted a lot. So look forward to that, I'm gonna show you a bunch of painting. I also painted a lot off screen but like I said you'll see the sketchbook tour at the end and I'm really excited for what I am doing. Uh, so yeah, finally putting that microphone back through to the living room as well. But yeah, I'm excited to get started into the sketchbook, finishing up the last couple of pages. I think I have six or seven to go, or I did when I filmed this but I only have four left or three left now. So yeah, let's get into the actual sketching and painting part. Alright, so here we are with my first painting in my sketchbook that I'm going to show you. Uh, this one was a really quick one. I did it from a reference of a picture that I found on Pinterest or Unsplash. I can't remember exactly where I found it, but this one's a little bit more abstract surrealist, not surrealist, impressionistic I would say. It's not uh, not where I want to go with it but it was fun to play around with the paint and to test that out and I just had the best time doing this and at the start of this video you will see that I had two cameras going and there was like I don't know, <laughs> there was things going on and I was doing good at filming and stuff but later on I just end up using my overhead camera a lot and this overhead camera isn't in the best quality or a focus but later on it does get better because I'm learning, okay, I'm learning. Talking about learning, I want to discuss what I actually learned from doing this challenge that I set myself to finish off this sketchbook this week. And uh, I'm really proud of myself for doing it, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so the first thing that I learned was that things don't actually have to be in the exact same shape as they are in real life to know what they're meant to be in a painting. Uh, later on you'll see this come to life a lot more, but basically it's leaves and foliage. And I struggled a lot with leaves and foliage before this challenge, but I think I've got to a point where I'm a little bit more confident. It's still really hard to do, but I feel like I'm a lot more confident in knowing that I can just create shapes that look like leaves and foliage and layer and just do the best I can to make it read as foliage, but I don't have to do every single leaf and I don't have to do every single detail on the leaf to make it really look good, which I'm happy about because 
that was one of the things that was stopping me from doing landscapes and uh, foresty things was that I didn't know how to portray a leaf basically <laughs> and the second thing that I learned was that I can paint a lot if I don't procrastinate and I make time for myself to paint because I just made sure that I didn't have anything important or deadlines to do and then I painted and I just painted all day and I had all day to do it. Yes, my house is a mess and I neglected a lot of things that I needed to do but <laughs> we, we had fun and I managed to finish this whole sketchbook which I'm really proud of and I'm happy about and I just want to paint more. Like I just keep wanting to paint and I uh, want to paint so that's really fun. And the third thing was that I really, really enjoy painting scenes and landscapes and things that don't actually have people in them, which is quite funny. But I do want to eventually add people to my uh, environment studies and things. And oh, by the way, you will see a lot of really aesthetic, um, not aesthetically pleasing, just satisfying tape appealing and yeah, that, that is something that I, I was really happy with. After that, I decided that I needed to figure out how I want to paint landscapes and I needed some help. So I decided to look for Studio Ghibli, uh, Studio Ghibli <laughs> things and copy them and learn from them. There I am. You can see me at my desk working. And yeah, I, uh, my head gets in the way a lot in this paint and I'm really sorry. I I'm still getting used to painting overhead stuff, um, but the next time I do an overhead thing like this, I will make sure that my head's not in the way. Um, but yeah, the, the fourth thing is that not every painting needs to be completed. If you're not enjoying it, it's okay to abandon it, but it's also good to push through something that isn't going well because you can learn a lot from it. So those are pretty much the things that I learned this week doing this. Um, you don't you know, you don't have to finish things. There is one that I show you in the sketchbook tour later that I just couldn't finish. And I I did push through it, but again, I don't like the way that it came out. And it was just because it was a little bit too complicated and difficult for me. So I had some issues with it. So yeah, that's basically everything that I learned from it. Again, with my horrible camera skills, I will get better, I promise. Um, but yeah, this this one, I really enjoyed doing this one. It was really fun with all the dots and stuff that you'll see later, but I didn't manage to film my favorite part, which was the mountain, which I'm upset about. In a second, I am going to interrupt myself because I bought a few things. I went to Hobbycraft for the first time in a while because shops have opened up here again and I was in Livingston anyway which is where my hobby craft is uh, to buy Caden a rain jacket for football so I decided to pop in there just to see and to get a few essentials that I thought that I needed and I was really good I didn't spend a lot of money and I'm really proud of myself so I just want to show you that little haul I am interrupting my painting session to show you a little haul it's a tiny one I decided to get myself a couple of brushes this pencil's not part of it. Because even though I have all of these brushes, I was still struggling to find the right one. So I got mainly small ones. I got two small ones. This is a three slash zero system three round Dale Rooney brush. I love these brushes. I actually already have a few. Can I even show you? Yes. I have this Filbert brush, which I absolutely love, but it's unfortunately splayed. It's really old. And I didn't treat it very well. I have a couple of other ones as well, but I just wanted to get them. And I have the watercolour version. The watercolour version of these brushes are the blue and the uh, acrylic version is the yellow. Um, I have this mini Filbert brush because I like the Filbert brushes. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to get all of the types of brushes that these offer but this is a two filbert brush and this one is a 10 slash zero liner system three brush this is a already showed you that one that's my old one yep and that's my old one and then we have this one which is a rare square 
brush, it's actually an angle, an angle shader, it's a one and a half uh, inch angle shader brush and this is basically the only decent sized square brush that I have. I have this one as well that I got in a pack too but it's a really cheap one so those are the only square brushes I have so I'm, I'm trying to build up my square and angle brush collection as well um, but this will be good for getting in the nooks and crannies but also doing bigger washes so I'm excited about that really wish I got more because when I went to the till and realized that I hadn't spent that much money I was a bit gutted but those are exciting and then I finally finally got these which are the replacement blades for my exacto knife I've had the same blade in my exacto knife since I got it about four or five years ago and it's gross and it's snapped and it's rubbish so I decided to get that and then this is the main thing that I needed to get was palettes technically I should have waited and got decent ones online these are plastic but they're actually harder plastic than usual and they're also either coated or sanded or something so I'm thinking you know it's better plastic than this but this is the reason why I want to get one of these I actually got two because my mixing is so chaotic I've got purples and browns over here as well as some yellows and reds I've got purple and black and grey and brown over here blues greens over here, some greens and orange over here, browns and greens over here, greens and pinks over here and it's just a nightmare. So even though I made some of these which will be handy, um, I just wanted a big well to put my mixes in so like this dish will be specifically for yellows and oranges and reds and purples and pinks maybe and then this one will be for blues and greens and browns and greys hopefully ideally I should have got more of these as well to be honest maybe three so that I could have the oranges and yellows and uh, reds in here and then the pinks and purples and browns maybe in here and then another one for the greens and blues and black to be honest four would probably be good but this is a start I'm gonna see how I enjoy these and they they like sit on top of each other quite nicely as well so I might get a couple more they're only £2.50 each so that's good um, I'm really sad that I didn't actually fully show you this I know the lighting's a bit funky I don't have my lights on but I'm really sad I didn't show you this um, but we have another three pages to go until we're finished this sketchbook so I'm really excited about that I'm going to test out these and these new brushes which I'm excited about too yeah I've kind of got this all messed up I'm going to fix it and test these brushes out and I will record that process for you so here we go this is the uh, poor painting that I didn't record doing and I'm really sad about but it's cool um, I had fun making it and it was one of my favorite ones again with my head in the way I'm really sorry I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying my best but yeah this is another I think they're studio get Ghibli or Ghibli or however you say that um, but I'm not sure I just was clicking on Pinterest to find them I will try and put them in the description but I might not be able to find them again because I didn't save them which was a shame but yeah, I love painting like this and I'm excited to actually go out in the world or to use my pictures to create uh, p um, illustrations like this from actual photos rather than just copying Studio Ghibli because uh, obviously it's easy to just copy things and to do things that are just laid out in front of you. But I picked up a lot of tips from this and I really like the style of it. It's illustrated, it's not realistic, um, but it's not too cartoony either. I really like it. I like, yeah, I just love it. Um, I was thinking about whether I should continue to use normal gouache or whether I should change to acrylic gouache. But to be honest, I'm having a lot of fun with normal gouache and I don't think that I would enjoy it as much as acrylic gouache. I mean... 
uh, sorry, as, as normal gouache, I don't think I would enjoy a colour gouache as much because you can blend very well with this, um, but you don't have to blend if you don't want to. So, yeah, there's... <laughs> There's kind of good things and bad things about it, especially when I'm layering a lot, sometimes the paint mixes in. And yes, my camera did cut off a few times and I didn't realise. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few things that I need to figure out whether I want to use acrylic or normal gouache, or maybe both, I don't know. But uh, I maybe might do a couple of these studies with acrylic gouache, just to see how I like it. And then I'll decide from there because I have plenty of Arteza gouache left and I've got a lot of uh, acrylic gouache as well. So I just need to figure out which ones I want to build my collection on. And if I don't want to use acrylic gouache, then I will probably give it away to friends or something like that if they need the colours. Um, so look out for that. It depends because I just don't want to have paint tubes that I'm not going to use just sitting there. I'd rather give them away. But we'll need to figure out what kind of, what one I want to use. Um, but I have so much Arteza gouache paint to get through that I'm not sure if it would be wise for me to not use that and give it away. Because it's a lot of money, I need to stop being nice to people. So yeah, <laughs> this one was really fun, I loved it, it was my, it was one of my favourites. And I'm just happy with it and I can't wait to make more. I, I keep on looking on Pinterest and looking on Unsplash and places like that to try and find reference pictures that I would want to recreate or at least recreate a part of it because that's another thing that I learned this week is that you don't actually have to paint the whole thing. Uh, you can choose a square or a rectangle of the painting or the photograph rather or in real life and just paint that part. You don't have to paint the whole thing in front of you and that's fun as well. Yeah. This one is actually a study from a person that I found on uh, YouTube. I've been following her for a while. She's really good at, um, she's really good at gouache paintings. Actually, um, I actually found her on Instagram first and she started a YouTube channel not long ago. Um, but I don't actually, like I can't remember her name. Which is really annoying because, yeah, it, it annoys me. I'll probably better be able to find her better on Pinterest because I have a lot of her sketchbooks saved. Um, Tara Jane Crandon. I'll put her links in the description below. Um, but her name on Instagram is Tara Jane Art. So yeah find her but I just did a study because I love the way that she uses uh, gouache and she kind of paints sort of similar to Studio Ghibli style but obviously she's got her own twist so I learned a lot from this as well. This one was really difficult it looked simple but it was really hard for me to do it and I did change up a couple of things just for ease of, of ease of things. This is actually a good point though when I was doing really dark colours in the background and then trying to add light on top of it. It does work with normal gouache but it does start to get muddy if you use too much water or if you don't do it correctly so this would be one instance where I would want a uh, more permanent colour which would be the, ac the acrylic gouache uh, so that I can lay on top of it with lighter colours and it doesn't matter as much. But even then, some of the colours kind of blend in together. You've got to wait until it dries. You've got to be patient. Uh, I had a hair dryer out, which I don't usually hair dry my work, but I think it's actually better to hair dry gouache compared to watercolour. Watercolour gets disturbed a lot if you use a hair dryer, but gouache is fine. So yeah, I just can't believe that I've managed to do this and paint like this because I always put it off and I didn't think that I could do it, but studying from other artists and other people that have already did this really gave me the confidence to do it. I haven't done it with an actual reference picture yet. Well, the next one is from a reference picture, but it was really simple and it wasn't anything like I was doing with the other ones. But um, I haven't done it yet, but I do have the confidence to do it and I want to do it like straight away. I just want to start. Uh, but I am conscious that I don't want all of my videos to just be about me painting landscapes like this I want to experiment with other things as well so 
I do want to paint more but I'm gonna hold off although to be honest if you are inspired and you want to paint and you have the time to paint you probably should just do it instead of putting it off just because you want to film a different type of video um, but I do want to film a different type of video and I know that I will still be inspired by this kind of artwork when I come back and it's only going to be a couple of days so it's fine um, but yeah this is the coming close to the end of this and look at it it's just it's glorious I can't believe I painted that but at the same time I know that it was a copy so it doesn't feel too good it still feels good but it doesn't feel as good as it could if I was the one to do it okay look at that gradient and then I ruin it <laughs> it's fine uh, yeah <laughs> I'm having trouble trying to mix the colours that I need. I needed a really dusky pink, uh, purple colour for the bottom part of the sky, but I couldn't get it. It wasn't good. And this is too simple. I don't like the way that this came out. I think that I could have added my own twist to it, maybe more colours, more waves, just a little bit of a better thing but I do want to practice that's one thing that I want to do actually I want to practice more uh, I want to practice individual elements that I'm struggling with like the foliage and water is one of the things that I also struggle with as well um, but yeah we're coming close to the end I'm just putting in all the little boats which is really cute like the little boats in the shadows in the background and then we're going to get into the sketchbook tour which I'm excited to show you because I think that uh, it's awesome and I get to talk more about each individual piece better. I did it. I finished this sketchbook. I'm so excited and I'm also so proud of myself for doing this because it's something that I've wanted to do for a while and I've done it. So I'm going to show you the sketchbook. Uh, obviously this was started in 2019 so the first one is of the biscuits that I was obsessed with back then but we're gonna quickly go through all of these just because I want to really talk about the other ones this is just a swatch page and then we have one of my very first landscapes actually so this is quite a good reference point um, of what I was doing and you can see the grass is very flat and the trees are a bit lacklustre and the gradient's not so good another one that was actually an acrylic though so we're not going to count that one because acrylic is hard uh, just getting rid of some paint here more biscuits obviously because we love a biscuit more biscuits this is my first inktober drawing although it's number three because I cheated a little bit uh, this is a really important part of this sketchbook for me so I don't want to gloss over it but I have done an inktober tour so you've already seen this if you've followed my channel for a while if not and you want to hear me talk about that a little bit more then you're probably better going to that video but um, I came back later and added these uh, portraits because I was trying to fill up the sketchbook and not leave it as empty um, another salad drawing here all done in ink tins pencils again salad and a couple more illustrations of portraits that I was doing and more salad there's gonna be a lot of salad again if you want to talk or hear me talk about these more then I will leave the video in the cards and in the description but yeah I'm really happy with this learned a lot from it was a very good challenge like I said I'm just gonna go quickly through it because the real juice of this sketchbook is when we get to the other parts this was actually not in the Inktober uh, video so I will talk about it kind of um, I was just trying to find an outfit for salad basically and then we get to the good stuff there's still some other stuff in between but these two pages had originally sketches on them and I put gesso over them or I just rubbed whatever it was out and this was my first one this one in my in my project it was hard um, reflections and sky and beach and sea is one of my hardest things and I was really getting frustrated so I wanted somehow to figure out how I can draw and illustrate landscapes without having such trouble as I did here. I still really like this painting, I think it's very impressionistic or whatever, but 
it's not the style that I'm going for. I want you to be able to know what you're looking at. And even though you could probably look at this and be like, it's a beach during the night-ish with clouds, eventually, I want you to be able to instantly know what it is. So this is actually a Studio Ghibli. I think that's how you say it. Studio Ghibli or Studio Ghibli. I'm not sure. We're going to go with Ghibli because that's that sounds the most natural to me but this is a study from Studio Ghibli and I was told that if I do these kind of studies things would click for me landscape wise so I decided to take that up and I'm really happy with the way that this came out my hands were shaking like mad for the dots but we got there in the end these are actually older paintings I did this in November 2019 and yeah this is the way that I was going with my landscapes then but this was also acrylic acrylic this was gouache again trying to do a night sky with some clouds and you know again this is when I actually first got my Arteza gouache kit or set rather the six day set and when I first seen it I was like oh my god these colors are so vibrant um, and I, I thought that this was all I could achieve with those colors but oh I was wrong, this is one uh, where I was just practicing to do cassette tapes for my other sketchbook challenge. And then we have this which is just some watercolour uh, crystals, this is actually really interesting because these were done, these were the very first crystals that I'd done and then I obviously uh, took this one because I really liked the effects of this one and did it digitally and turned those into stickers so I was really happy with that and then this page was done this month a couple of days ago I decided that I wanted to fill up the sketchbook because it was just lying empty so I uh, I did this and did some keys and doors but it took a turn obviously I went back and did uh, these two after I did this uh, this is just a random copy of something on Pinterest that I found. I was going to do houses and then this is another stu Studio Ghibli thing as well. But it wasn't coming out very well. It was the first complicated one that I had done and I've not really done houses or buildings or structures or anything like that. So I was having trouble with this one and I'm not very good at drawing things like this. So I didn't have a solid drawing baseline and... I just didn't, you know, do it very well. This is where it all turned around for me. I had so much fun doing these ones, especially this one. I mean, I had fun doing this one as well, but halfway through I lost the reference, so I had to make it up as I went along. But this one was so fun. I loved it. I loved the way that I was creating the shapes and the and the colours of the foliage and the background and all of that. I just like the way that it looks I have noticed upon looking at it again that there's not enough depth I would prefer it to be a little bit darker in here and behind here but other than that I'm really happy with this I think this is another Studio Ghibli uh, Ghibli Ghibli whatever it's called <laughs> study and then after this I was just clicking on random things on Pinterest but I will try and find most of the references that I was using. I don't know exactly where these two are because I didn't save them. But in the future I'll make sure that I save them. Um, and then this one is actually a study from another gouache artist. And I'll put her links in the description below. Her gouache um, is amazing. And I just wanted to study from it. It looks nothing like hers. And it was a, it was very challenging, especially this part here. Um, but it is showing me kind of ways that I can do foliage and how I can figure that out. So I think that I've progressed leaps and bounds with this little project that I decided to do just to finish off this sketchbook. And this is the last one, which was simple. I smudged it a little bit because I was too impatient to show you. But a simple little uh, sea slash sunset scene with boats. Um, I really annoyed because I had a really good gradient here but because of these clouds that I messed up I broke it but I think you can still uh, attest to the fact that the gradient is much better than this one um, even though it is a little bit you know thingied in the middle but I think it would be much better if I didn't actually try to fix it and then the last page is just swatches that I did 
eons ago. So I've finished this sketchbook now. It is the travel, what is it? It's a travel log handbook global art materials sketchbook. So if you want to use this, I highly recommend it. It was really nice to use. I'm obviously moving on to the moleskin now just to see how I like that one. But I just want to thank you for coming along on this journey with me. It was a very fun ride. It's only Wednesday and I've managed to figure, I've managed to complete this in three days. So even though there wasn't that much that I did in those three days, like I did, hold on, let's count how many pages I did. I did two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I did nine pages in three days and I mean that's pretty good going for me um, but yeah I am going to start a new sketchbook now and I hope that you come along on the journey with me uh, for that but yeah I'm going to go and end this video so again thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!